We're at a point where we're taking one game at a time. Every day is a grind, you know, so it doesn't matter who steps on the field. We're here to compete. It doesn't matter if it's the first third or the last third, you know, every day we're here to work, get better, and just put our best play out there every day. It's all about the championship mindset. When you come and you don't love it, it's evident. If you want to be the best, you have to play the best. We have to fight for it. Every day you show up knowing that if you don't work, you're going to be outworked. If you want to be great, you don't really have a choice. You're either going to show up or you're not. And it's that competitive edge that is ultimately going to lead to a team that's hungry to win every single moment, every single inning, every single day. Welcome to Iowa. Welcome to the start of Big 12 play. I think the first third was setting the tone, getting it started, and then now coming into conference, it's just leading the way to postseason, but here it's all about winning championships. I think it looks exactly the same as it did in the beginning. We still are on the same mission. Nothing changes. Practices are the same. We're still grinding. We just know what we're working towards. Um, everybody has that set goal in mind, and that is to be the best and to play the best that we can. So I think if we just keep that mentality of every day we're getting better, that 1% better every day mentality, we're here to fight and we're here to play the game. So here we go. Pretty deep at the wall. It hits off the base of the wall. And it's one zip Sooners on a double from Kinsey Hansen. Full count pitch, it won't matter. It's ball four. And the Sooners take a three zip lead on a bases loaded walk to Jada Coleman. Fifth strike out of the game for Storaco. Racing out is Jennings, but racing in to make the catch and in the game is Avery Hodge. Win column Sooners, game over in Ames. And Oklahoma makes it 45 straight against the Cyclones. The final score, Oklahoma three, Iowa State nothing. And Oklahoma opens up a 10-run lead. It's 13 to three. And that's a win column Sooners. Oklahoma sweeps the weekend from Iowa State. They are 30 and one on the season. Bring on the horns. The Red River showdown awaits the Sooners this weekend. Welcome to history. Tonight, the largest crowd to ever watch a regular season softball game in college athletics will file into the softball capital of the world, USA Softball Hall of Fame Stadium, to see the greatest rivalry in sports, Oklahoma and Texas. A little added juice to the rivalry with the fact that these two teams played for the national championship last year. I cannot believe what we get to witness. Just the growth that OU softball has brought to the sport of softball has been so tremendous. Jordy Ball rocks and fires. We are underway in Oklahoma City. He lifted pretty deep to center field. That's got a chance. Jada Coleman watches it fly over the center field wall. Coleman lifts one towards shallow center field, racing over and dropping it. It's dropped. Dropped in center field by Scott. Coleman's on her way to third. She'll slide it safely. The pitch bounced back up the middle through into center field, and just like that, we're tied. Pretty deep left field. Boone racing back, reaches up, makes a spectacular catch. Boone ranging back, makes another leaping catch. What an inning for Riley Boone. She hammers one. Oh, God. Oh, my goodness. Look at that baby fly. A three-run home run by T.R.A. Jennings. This might be deeper. Haley Lee hits another ball <laughs> that takes one hop and goes over the left field wall. And the Sooners go back to back. On home plate, swing and a miss. Jordy Ball rips the face mask off. Oh, it's long gone. Touch of all, Kinsey Hansen. The Sooners are up eight to one, and Hansen calls for noise. The one, two, got it. Swing it with Colin Sooners. Game over in front of a record setting crowd in Oklahoma City. Sooner Nation, thank you for coming out today. Breaking records, that was the best. Boomer. I love our Sooner fans, but I didn't think I could love them any more than I did tonight. I think as I'm older and I've been around, I see things that are new and maybe some people take it for granted, but I just, I remember sitting in the stadium when I was like in my late 20s, watching the World Series with 2,000 people, thinking that's the greatest thing I'd ever seen in my life. 
And now you've got 9,000 people watching a conference game here. I mean, it was unreal. I was just, I was feeling chills, but I'm sometimes thinking I'm the only one, because our players are just playing, you know? And I'm like, stop, everybody stop. Look around, look around, look what you see. And they're like, what? I'm like, okay, never mind. It's just me, it's just me. I just gotta enjoy it myself. Tonight, um, literally once in a lifetime, it's never happened before in the game of softball. So just to be a part of that was absolutely incredible. Um, and it just says something about our fans and just how the game of softball is growing. And they're coming from, I think I had heard 37 different states. When I see these things, it's just, I'm blown away. I'm still just absolutely blown away. Second for one, over to first, double play. 1-0 oh, is slapped to short. Texas scores the first run of the day. The 1-1 pitch is grounded back up the middle. Diving play by Lions, shovels to second, and they got her! Oh my goodness grace, Lions is unbelievable. To second. And through the wickets, off the glove of good, and one run is in as Jada Coleman scores. Opposite field over Boone's head, back it goes and it's gone. There's no chaos in our dugout at all. As long as they have three outs, they feel they can win any game they're in. One thing about us though is that we never give up. It ain't over till the last three outs are done. Lift it deep to left field. It's got a chance. We're tied in the bottom of the seventh inning. Base hit, ball game. Oklahoma walks it off with a rally in the seventh. And they come back to beat Texas by a final score of four to three. I think we were overthinking it a little bit. And when our lineup is at our best, is more playing off instinct. There was a whole lot of fight, and that's all that really mattered in the end. Jennings sends that one deep back to the wall, and it is gone. Here's a hard hit ball to short. That one skips by Martinez. Here comes Brito. She'll score. And she rips one deep to right center field. It'll hit off the base of the wall. Holman scores easily. Prodigious blast for Haley Lee. Swing and a miss. Got her. Cold strike three. Corner looking. Doesn't matter. Swing and miss. Got her on the rise. Got her swinging. Let's go to Cole May. There's a rocket. That'll reach the base of the wall out in center. Hodge being waved around. She's headed for home. And it's back-to-back walk-off wins for the Sooners. Sydney Sanders, the RBI double to win it 10 to two. Swing and a miss. Ostrarocco with a little fist pump. 3-2. Got her swing. The 2-2 from May. Swing and a miss. Seventh strikeout of the game. All of our pitchers are aces, and they could be aces on any other team in the country. I mean, they're all so different. It's hard when you'll have a game plan for one, and then the other will come up, and you're like, oh, well, I got to switch it on that. It's a little tricky, difficult, because you want them all to have as many innings as you can, but it doesn't make sense for me to put Jordy on the mound all the time. All of them are so capable, and I just feel really confident about that. They're all different, and they all bring a different element and depth to their own pitching style. Jordy, as a pitcher, is just so much blue collar, and she's got this fire that really is unmatched. To do what she did as a freshman is really special, so I think, you know, what she adds to this is just a lot of that fire, that workhorse mentality. No matter what, she's going to keep her mindset and nothing's going to take her out of it. She is one of the hardest working people that I know on and off the field. Being around her makes everybody better. Rock is the one who's fired up and defense sees that and they feel that and they're right behind her 24-7. And so I think Rock brings that fire, sassy energy that we need on the field. When she's feeling good about herself, you know, and it's something that I vibe with very well behind the plate, and it's infectious to the team. Being able to lean on each other within the bullpen has been great, and getting those, you know, first game nerves out of the way has been awesome, and then really just being able to trust everything that I have. You know, I've worked really hard to be in this position, so just excited to see what collectively we can do. Nicole just brings just a lot of, like, even keel, just, you know, there, she's going to show up, she's going to work, and um, it's even more exciting when you get emotion out of her on the mound, so, you know, it's a big deal. I feel like I kind of was always like that growing up. I never really showed emotion. I didn't even show emotion really until I got to college, 
And then coach was like, hey, you know you're allowed to like act excited if you are excited. I'm like, oh yeah, like, okay. <laughs> but when I show emotion, I feel like it's very genuine. Something that I love about Nicole May that she brings to the table is her composure. She almost approaches the game in a very neutral way, which is what I think makes her successful because she doesn't let herself get too high when she's doing really well and she doesn't let herself get too low either. When things are going her way, she knows how to keep it composed. When batters face her, they know that she's not gonna get rattled. With Deal, she brings just a lot of, you know, a little sass, a little attitude, and a lot of excitement. And being at Oklahoma as a freshman is um, not easy. It's a really big change from high school and travel ball. So, um, you know, I love I love to take Deal out for coffee sometimes and just chat. I love Kirsten. Um, she just has an amazing personality. She's a hard worker. She is not afraid to ask anybody questions. So she is really just coming in. Um, and reminds me a lot about myself in the way that I just was trying to pick the brains of the other girls in the bullpen and she does the exact same thing. Whenever she's out there, she just handles herself so well. She's so composed um, and I think that is rare to see in young athletes out there on the big stage, but she's handled herself really well. They are awesome and I love that their confidence and their routines, they bleed out onto us and we just feed off of them. What is the toughest thing going against them is their presence and the confidence. They build off of each other. We know that like whoever Coach Rocha or Coach Gasso decides to go with, um, we are 100% behind them. We're always cheering them on in the dugouts. There's no jealousy. This is like one of the most supportive staffs that I've ever been a part of. I'm very fortunate. I love the looks that we have coming out of the bullpen, but the beauty is they're not exhausted or overworked in that you're starting to see that around the country a little bit more and I, I think it's very effective. You go out there and you're able to trust your pitches a little bit extra because you know if you don't get it done, the next person is right there. Our pitching staff is just really big on just whenever you're called, be ready. Welcome to the Bayou on the campus of Louisiana State University. Let's talk about the importance of games like this. These are good tasks, aren't they? I know when we walk in, everyone's so friendly. Hi, we're so happy you're here. As soon as the first pitch is thrown, everything's gonna change. I want them to experience every kind of weather, every kind of environment, every kind of umpire. We can't control the uncontrollables and we have to learn how to live with them and deal with them. So there's a lot of lessons that we can learn from tonight's game. The 2-2, bounce back up the middle, through into center field. Here comes Erickson. The throw is online, but not on time. The full count pitch again. Line drive, right center field and deep, and gone! It's a Brito bomb, and the Sooners have jumped on top 3-0. The pitch, got her swinging, inning over. So here's the 3-2 from Jordy Ball. Ground ball to third. Brito snags it out of the air, inning over. Pitch from Ball is hard hit to short, could be two. To second for one to first. Oh, bring it up! 6 4 3, double play, two away. Here's the pitch. Got her. Swinging, ball game. With column suitors. Final score from Baton Rouge Oklahoma three. LSU nothing. The Sooners have won 29 straight and improved to 37 and 1. Hammer, Sid Sanders, did you just get all of one? Oh, you bet you did! And Oklahoma has put this game where? In run roll territory. The you know, one ground ball to short, could be two, to second for one, to first, ball game! For the final time as a member of the Big 12, the Oklahoma Sooners battle the Baylor Bears in Waco. They're excited to play. I think they just want that opportunity to get back on this field. That's what I've been feeling since we had our first loss. To be honest, it's not about Baylor. It's, it's about us. It's about what we need to accomplish to win a championship. But this was the place that we learned we got a lot of things to fix. Oklahoma and Baylor. What a pitch from Jordy Ball. Oh, get out of here, Ball. It's gone. Sidney Sanders. The runner is second. First pitch swinging. Ground ball back up the middle into center field. Here comes T.R.A. Jennings again. The throw this time is not in time. Overmatched. Unfair. Swing and a miss. Line drive to left field. Caught. Drop. Oh, it was dropped. Scoring easily as Sanders Boone is on her way to third. It's lined into left center field by Jada Coleman. Here comes Nugent. She'll score. It's 7-0 Sooners. The 2-2 from Ball. Got her swinging. 
That's the 10th strikeout of the day for Jordy Ball. Line drive right to Lions Ball game. The final from Waco, Oklahoma 7, Baylor nothing. She lays down a bunt, charged by Brito, gloves throws. Oh, what a stretch by Sanders. Off speed, reached, looped, leaping catch by T.R.A. Jennings at second. 1-1, there's the bunt to the circle, shovel to the plate. Hanson gets the tag, the runner's out at home. Now they've got a runner and a run down between third and second. And she's tagged out as T.R.A. Jennings spikes the softball. A three-run bomb. And Oklahoma has opened it up in Waco over the Bears. It's four zip. Hammer. If it's fair, it's long gone. Oh, it's out of here. A home run by T.R.A. Jennings over the left field wall. And what a start for the Sooners. Home run, Alyssa Brito, a no doubter over the left field wall. And it's two nothing Sooners. Oh, it hit off the hand of Brito. Now the runner's trying to take third. May covers the bag. Out at third. Fly ball, center field. This should do it. Jada Coleman under it. Makes the catch. Ball game. Sweep City as the Sooners take all three in Waco. The rain has cleared at least for now. And the Sooners are looking to pick up where they left off in Big 12 play, taking on the Kansas Jayhawks here at Marita Hines Field. The Sooners go back to back to back on bombs from Lyon, Britos, and Kinsey Hansen. Boone's on her horse, racing back. Oh my goodness! What a catch by Riley Boone! Full extension on the warning track. Line drive down for a hit. Could we walk it off? The throw to home is up the line. Not in time. Win column shooters. Walk it off, Jordy Bull. There's that gap right center field. Cut off nicely by Linda. Oh, they're going to send Coleman anyway. It doesn't matter. She scores. Base hit into center field. Get hot again, Haley. Sanders scores. Here comes Brito. She's safe. The Sooners are smoking. Here's a one hop. Oh, no hopper. What a play by Brito to pick it off the dirt. Backhanded by G3. Plants throws. What a stretch. They got her. Oh, what a play. The bouncer. What a play on the backhand by third. Brito. Wow. No way. There's a hard hit ball. Deep to right center field. At the wall. It's gone. Grace Green. Touch them all. Grace Green is the backbone of this team. She's like the mother of all of us. On the field, off the field, she's probably our go-to with anything. She's not an everyday starter, but she loves the team. And I think that a lot of people nowadays, they're quick to leave. Like they don't see the field, they're done. And Grace Green always shows up with a smile on her face and is just a lovable person. She is just that leader in the dugout who's going to cheer you on. She's that person that I go to in the dugout. Coach Gasso talks a lot about us coming in as girls and leaving as women, and I definitely have seen that in my own life. This program is very, uh, unlike others, uh, there's really high standards, um, and I just know that that is going to help just continue to propel me uh, throughout my life and just continue to grow in that. For her to be able to come out and really voice her opinion and have everybody stop and listen because we know that she cares so much. My legacy, I would want people to remember me as a great teammate, a hard worker, and someone who stood up for what she believed in and always uh, gave glory to God in everything that she did. And so if that's what my legacy can be, that's exactly what I want it to be. She isn't in that position where she's on the field, but to see how supportive she can be I think that's just gold in a teammate. She makes sure everybody stays in track in the dugout, and I think when her moment does happen, she takes the most advantage of it. In her senior weekend, she hits a three-run home run over the right field wall, and the Sooners are up by two touchdowns. Off speed, slow roller to short. The only play is going to be to first. Reno head first slide, and she beats it. Line drive, deep to left field. Oh, it's gone. Get it done, and Oklahoma is your back to 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 back Big 12 champions. You guys are there. You are setting the standard across the country. You are. We are here.
to raise the ceiling for women's athletics, for women's softball here. You guys are making the history for us. You are. And I can't tell you how much you mean to this program, to this team, where we're going, where we've been. Look at this stadium because you won't be sitting in it next year. Welcome to the final regular season series of 2023 and what better way to wrap it up than with the Phillips 66 Bedlam series. It's Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. I think looking at the Bedlam series, it's definitely something that we're getting pumped up for. I think to experience playing at Oklahoma State, definitely that pressure. There's not going to be as much Sooner fans there. Baseline picked up by Brito throws. Oh, what a scoop by Sanders and they got her at first base. So you definitely get that postseason feel in Oklahoma State. Um, you're playing for a championship. You're probably going to see them again in the uh, Big 12 tournament, but that's just setting the table for postseason. Burrito skies one deep to left field. Holy smokes! This ball's a leap in the yard and leap in the stadium. Bedlam's very important because it's basically just who owns Oklahoma. I would rather take playing OSU at the end of the season than more than the beginning, just because they are such a good team and. You want to kind of be battle tested when you start going into the postseason, so I think that's super big that we got to play them. Diving play, Grace Lyons, of course. Gloves throws, got her. Bull game. Chalk up a dub for the Sooners. Oklahoma comes to Stillwater and knocks off Oklahoma State in game one of the Bedlam series. Hard hit ball to third. They'll have a play at home. The throw is on time. We'll try to double off Brito. They did. The one-two pitch, ground ball through into right field, a base hit. Oklahoma State for the second night in a row takes the lead. The one-two, looped into center field, base hit. Taylor Tuck has a three-hit day, and it's 2-0 Oklahoma State. No matter what time of the game it is, if it's the bottom of seven, top of seven, we're never out of a game. And Coach Gasso really emphasizes that. No matter who we're playing, when or where, like everything matters because it's momentum into postseason. The pitch, holds right three. Kirsten Deal comes out of the pin. You have to play all seven innings. It doesn't stop until the game's over with the last out. 0-2, oh, grounded down the first baseline, fair! Fair into the corner, off to second goes Jocelyn Erickson. The throw is not in time, it's a leadoff double down the line. Hitting's contagious, so once someone gets that hit, then it's gonna stack on and on and on and on. 3-1, line drive, left field base hit. They'll send the runner ball and she'll score! 3-2 is a line drive towards left center field and deep, it thuds off the wall. Here comes Torres. Riley Boone will score the go-ahead run, and Oklahoma has come back in Bedlam to take a 3-2 lead on an RBI double that scored two from Tiore. Kirsten Deal, the freshman. Biggest spot of the season for her, the pitch. Yes. All strike three, right down Lindsay. The pitch, popped up, right side. Sanders giving chase under it. Win column Sooners, a win unlike anything we've seen from the Sooners in 2023. Make it 40 in a row in comeback fashion here in Stillwater. Oklahoma has won the Bedlam series and they rally with four in the seventh to beat Oklahoma State by a final score of four to two. Oh, for one, and she hammers one. Deep to right center field, a diving attempt is missed. One run will score. Here comes Sanders, she'll score on a two-run double from Brace Lions to start the party in Bedlam. Cold strike three, right down Lindsay, inning over, and a fired up Alex Garaco. That is her 1,000th career strikeout. He is looped into shallow left field, falling fast, it's down for a hit. It gets away from Edwards in left field. One run scores. Here comes Lee, she'll score. It's a two-run double from Alina Torres. 1-0 pitch from Straka. Popped up on the infield. Lions is under it. Makes the catch. The Sooners sweep Bedlam. And Oklahoma.
Oklahoma wraps up the 23 conference season unblemished, undefeated, and champions. We'll see you next week in Oklahoma City as the one seed. And just like that, the postseason is here. Welcome to the softball capital of the world, USA Softball Hall of Fame Stadium in Oklahoma City, where today the Oklahoma Sooners look to return yet again to the Big 12 Championship Final against the upstart and red-hot Iowa State Cyclones. First pitch to G3. That ball is blasted. Deep to right center field and long gone. Oh, baby, what a shot from Grace Lyons as she bombs a home run over the right center field wall. She swings and destroys one way out of here over the right field wall. A two-run bomb from Jada Coleman makes it 9 nothing Sooners. Popped up down the right field line, giving chase is Lilio and makes a sensational diving catch. Quincy Lilio covering some ground. Swing and a miss. Ball game. We'll see you tomorrow in the Big 12 championship game. And Oklahoma has now won 42 straight games. It's the longest winning streak in program history. It's the second longest of all time. She launches one deep to center Phil at the wall. It's gone. Haley Lee hits a bomb over the center field wall. And she salutes the crowd as she airplanes into home plate. Line drive towards the gap in right center field. It's down to the wall. Get on your horse, Haley Lee. It's 2-1 Sooners, and Brito takes third. Low to the backstop. Here comes Brito. It's 3-1 on the wild pitch. Ground ball back up the middle and through into center field. Patty Gassel will send Jordy Ball. The throw is not in time. Oh, Riley Boone, you are so clutch. A two-out RBI single has widened the Oklahoma lead to four to one. It's a three-run fourth inning. Grounded softly towards short. Could be two to second for one to first. Ring it up! Six, four, three, double play. There's two away. Everybody's standing. Ground ball towards third. Brito up, throws. Got her! The Sooners beat Texas six to one and claim the Big 12 Tournament Championship for the eighth time in program history. Oklahoma has won 43 straight games. They've won five of the last six Big 12 tournaments. And they're champions once again. The final score from Oklahoma City, OU six, Texas one. No surprise who we find at the top with that championship mindset and just one blemish on the record. Oklahoma is the top seed. Who will they start out with? The pride of Hofstra, champions of the Colonial, with a walk-off from Angelina Iapolo and also featuring Megan Giordano. So the Sooners and the pride will get things going. We got to do like we play every game, come out, play hard, be focused, execute all the things you need to do to win. Uh, it's consistency, it's hard work, it's grit, it's clutch. It's all those things you need in postseason. We're not scared, we're kind of just going for it. We're grinding in practice and all of that. So we're ready and everyone's really excited because this is the best part. Taking it day by day and building off of each game, continuously looking at what we can do better. We work on that in practice, so we're going to be prepared for each game. Let's just be ready to go, be locked in the whole time reset when we need to and just take deep breaths and at the end of the day just have fun because our play talks for itself. This is the best time of the year so we're ready to go for sure. So you'll always be in the record books as that team. So you get to put a beautiful ribbon on this and put it aside because now it's go time.